I don't want to surprise any bears today. I'm not taking any chances in these woods. But actually, when bears see humans, they tend to run the other way. But in the early days, settlers had to witness bear break-ins. No bear cake could keep a big bear out of the log cabin. I've always imagined a settler woman sitting on one side of the door, trying to keep a coolness about her as a bear clawed away on the other side. It's logical she turned to quilting and possibly created the bear's paw block. This is a 20 block antique quilt made in the late 1800s out of solid red turkey red fabric because turkey red required a multi-stage dyeing process. It was often priced considerably higher than other fabrics sold for clothing and quilts. In the 1875-76 Montgomery Ward catalog, quilt makers could order red prints for nine and a half cents a yard or turkey red prints for 27 and a half cents a yard. It was worth three times more the price. Well, if you notice, some of the lattice are rust colored and it makes me wonder if the quilt maker used a syn synthetic red dye that faded to brown. Well, this quilt has never been laundered. It's just in perfect condition. Well, we'll cut paws and sharp claws as this quilt maker did 100 years ago but with a quicker method. In the fall, the bears will slow down and hibernate. Can you imagine that some bears can stay asleep in one position without eating or producing waste for up to six months or more? Now, if we just had a good stash of fabric for the winter, I bet we could quilt six months straight and never leave the house. I met a woman from Eagle, Alaska that did just that. Well, let's get busy and make our bear's paw blocks for the bears in the woods quilt. And then I'll show you an easy to do homespun wall hanging called Bear Valley, complete with applique bears. It's perfect for decorating a hearth during the holidays. Well, just bear with me and we'll get sewing. to make four bear's paw blocks today and you can set those four together into a small well hanging as this and set it together with lattice and cornerstones. Now when I refer to the pieces of the block this part right here is the paw and there are four of them in each block. Then these pieces are the claws and there's 16 of those in each block. Now the bear's paw block is the third block in the bears in the woods quilt. We've already finished those 12 log cabin blocks that make up the center of the quilt and then the 20 pine trees around the log cabin blocks. And if you think of those pieces as a square, the bear's paw blocks make up the four corners. Well, in these fabrics, it just looks great in the homespun checks, plaids, oh, it looks very woodsy, doesn't doesn't it? Now we're going to start with the claws and they come from a medium piece of fabric right here and the background right sides together. The size of the piece is 6 inches by 12 inches. Ooh, I already have that cut and I'm ready to just go right into the marking. Now it's a 3 inch grid so just take your 6 by 12, take a marker, take a pencil, line up the ruler at 3 inches and just slide it along, marking each three inches. Let me see, I've got a six, and then one more at a nine. And then once you've gone three inches across, just turn your ruler and mark it straight across the opposite direction at the three inch line. Oh, that's looking good. Now, we're gonna draw diagonal lines every other row. So start in the upper corner, line up your ruler, angle to angle, then skip the next row, but now draw other diagonal lines. Let me see if I can get that lined up. Boy, this is so critical right now, getting that perfect. And then right down here, skip the next row and add one more line. Now, once you've gone in one diagonal direction, just lift up your ruler and turn it and go the opposite way. So 
you actually create something that looks like this this circle right in the center and that's going to be perfect let me see one more line and i'm ready for sewing that didn't take long now you want to use a perfect quarter of an inch i have my quarter of an inch foot on my machine and use 15 stitches to the inch just line it up so that the presser foot is on the left side of the line and then the stitching is one quarter inch from the line and then as you stitch along there right as you get down to here be a great idea if you have needle down go ahead and use it on that line so that you can just raise your presser foot pivot around and head up the other side now up on this end you want to make sure that you actually take off the needle down, lift it up so that you can just lift this up and pivot it right around. Now I'm just going to keep on going right around on the left side of the diagonal line until I get right back to where I started from. And while I do that, I'm going to tell you a story about a settler and his bear, of course. Well, the year is 1836, and our settler is just 24 years old, and he moved into an area near that's now Cleveland. Well, you can imagine, there'd certainly be a lot of trees to take down in the Cleveland area. Well, he had a virgin forest, 160 acres he had to clear, so you could tell he had a lot of work to do. Okay, now I'm right back to where I started, so I'm just gonna raise my presser foot, swing it around, drop the presser foot so it's on the left side of the foot again, and then just keep on going back around till I get back to where I started from, and I'll just keep on talking about that woodsman as I go. Well, he actually liked to, to Clear the, clear the area. He'd like to take down those logs. He thought it was great fun. There was only one fly in the ointment, and that fly was Marianne. Well, Marianne was so beautiful, she could have her pick of the young men for two counties around. Well, he kept on asking Marianne. He just really wanted her hand in marriage. He kept on asking for permission. She just wouldn't have anything to do with him. You know, she just was stringing him along. And so finally, one day he said, okay, Marianne, I'm gonna give you an ultimatum. He said, I'm gonna come over and you're just gonna have to tell me, do you want me or not? He said, first I'm gonna take and clear off a few more acres. So the day came, he cleared his acreage until five o'clock in the afternoon, and then he headed out. And of course he must have been dreaming about Marianne as he went along, suddenly he stopped and he tied his shoe. The next thing he knew, he was picking some blossoms for Mary Ann. And he must have been dreaming because he looked up and there facing him was a ferocious mother bear. Well, ferocious brown mother bear. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this piece. Now hold the thought about that bear because I've gone the whole way around. I have a quarter of an inch stitching on both sides, so I just have that half inch right in the middle. It's looking good. So all I wanna do is just set that seam before I go ahead and cut it apart. It just sets the stitches right into the work. So just press it set it in place, and then I'm ready now to cut it apart. So just lay it down flat exactly as you marked it. Then you just go ahead and cut it apart. Oh, just pick up that ruler, move it to the next spot, cut, and all of the first, all of the straight three inch lines, raise that ruler, oops, cut it apart there. Drop that back down, right down through the middle exactly as you marked it and then cut on all of the diagonal lines. It's actually all of those pencil lines that we cut on first, and then we'll go back to that bear. So there he was. He got so excited dreaming about Mary Ann. He laid his gun. The bear was between his, him and his gun, so he just climbed a tree. Well, that mother bear was just so persistent. She kept him there all day until noon the next day when she finally came back. Well, you know that Marianne was so tearful that when he finally showed up with his yarn about the bear, she was so happy to see him. She said, yes, and they lived happily ever after.
That's a good story about the settlers and the bears. Well, I want to show you now I have all the pieces cut apart and I want to show you how to square them up. I've been doing a new method of a square up. This is a static paper that I actually cut into a two and a fourth inch square because I want these pieces to be squared up to two and a fourth inches. So you cut first a two and a fourth inch square, then you cut it on the diagonal and then you just take that static paper, peel it off and apply it to the back edge of your six by six ruler. Let me see if I can get that in place perfect. Oops, just slip that off just a little bit. Let me get that lined up. Okay, now once you have that in place, then you're going to just use this to square up all of those pieces. Oh, let me move that. That really is static, isn't it? Okay, to use this as a square up method, you just line up the paper so that you just see the stitching on this side of it. You put it right on the stitching, line that up, and you can possibly trim just one side, maybe need to do just a little on the second side, and then just go ahead and trim off all of the corners. And then once you have that all squared off like that, then all you need to do is just set the seam and press that open so that you should have a perfect two and a fourth inch square. Let me just go ahead and check and see. Ooh, looking good. Two and a fourth inches. Let me square up all 16 of them and I'll show you how to sew that block together. So let's just cut to the bare bones and get this block finished. Well, I made four stacks and I put four pieces in each one of the stacks, especially if you're just making one block. Now the important thing is, is that you turn two in this direction and two in this direction. Oh, you've got to watch that because it's easy to get them mixed up. So let's just set aside the first two stacks and I'm just going to bring them close over here to my sewing machine and take the piece on the right and flip it right sides together to the piece on the left and just get those outside edges lined up same quarter inch seam allowance hold on to those threads in the back and boy this is the time get that stiletto out because you can just pick it up and match those outside edges and all you want to do as assembly line sew these claws through one after the other. Pick up the next piece, put it right on behind, and just keep on going until you actually have 16 of these, especially if you're going to make all four of those blocks. Let me just do one more, and then I'm just going to show you the next step. Let me get this lined up. And now I want to get the seams set up so that in the next step they're just going to lay perfectly. So this is what you want to do. Take these pieces and drop them on the mat so that the stitching is right across the bottom like this. And then set that seam and you want to lift and press down so that those seams are going right towards you. Now if you do this perfectly, boy those seams are going to lock right into place. All right, it's looking perfect. Now, just go ahead and cut these apart and let me show you how to lay them out with the paw piece. And if we're lucky, they're gonna be exactly the same size. Now, this is the paw and it should measure whatever these two are sewn together. It should be four inches. So get those all stacked up like that and then go ahead and take a two and a fourth inch background square, get them in position because the last two stacks are going to be sewn together so that they look like this. This is just going to be magical here because I already did them. Look at that carefully so you've got all those claws going in the right direction. Just set these aside because what you want to do now is just flip this piece onto this so you can go straight down along there. Let me just sew those and then I'll show you the next step. Oh, I have to just keep on turning these around for you and for me. But just pick them up, match up that two inch background square with the outside edge of your piece. Right so, like that. Line that up and then as soon as that's stitched, pick up the next set with your paw and the claw in the right direction. Well, if I could just get one of them, that would be really good. Okay, line that up in the outside edge and match it here. Stitch it along and your stitching should cross right through at that V. Hold this down flat, line that up, looking good. Okay, now, once you've gone down 
straight down on assembly line sewing all of these pieces. Let me lay that back in position. All you want to do is open these up. That should line up. Flip this piece right sides together. And at this seam, you want to push the top one right towards the background square, the underneath seam towards the paw. And you'll just wiggle that in there so that those seams get perfectly lined up. And then just stitch right across there. Let me see one more line of stitching and I'm going to have at least one fourth of the block made. Let me see. And then by the time you put four of these together and sew them with the lattice in the center square, they should be a 12 and a half inch block. It's going to equal out to be exactly like the log cabin and the trees. Let me see one more bit and I'll show you. Okay, one fourth of it's done and Want the stitching to match right here. See matches there. That's good. Right there. Just cut it so that it's like that. And the last step is just to go ahead and set the four paws together with a lattice that is two inches wide by five and three fourths inches long. And then right in the center, a two inch square. And this red can be exactly the same color as your log cabin center, just to tie the whole quilt together. Well, I'm gonna finish up my blocks and then I'll show you another project using just this part of the block. The bears have come to the valley and they're hungry. Well, Mama Bear and her two baby bears are just wandering through that forest of three pine trees and they're all fused down on a background of mountains and sky. Add two borders and then work your way on out to that bear's paw border. Oh, there's 16 paws in that border and it just makes for a great homespun wall hanging. Now all of those pieces in the background are 18 and a half inches wide. Start with the sky at 12 and a half inches, then the mountains are cut at seven inches, and that ground piece is six and a half inches wide. Now the whole process is done with paperback webbed fusing, and you actually take that paperback fusing and you iron it on the wrong side of the fabric. Now this is the mountain piece, and the mountain shape is drawn right on that paper, and then allow a quarter of an inch or so right on one end, so that once you fuse that paper in place, then all we're going to do is just cut on that line. Oh, let's see how I can just whip around these mountains. Wouldn't the bears love it if they could just climb over it? Now the way you cut this, you can actually end up with two mountains whenever you're done. So now that you have this trimmed away, then all you need to do is just peel away that paper. Oh, just one more little cut right in there. Where is that spot? But peel away the paper and then just fuse it right on top of that background fabric. And you allow that space right down there so that you can go ahead, take this ground piece, flip it right sides together to it, and seam it so you have this one complete unit. Now, start with the trees. Oh, they're fun. You're just gonna start and cut three strips. You can cut them 3 4 inches wide to 5 8 inches wide. Let me just cut one strip. Now, once you have the strip cut, you wanna taper it at the top down to a quarter of an inch. Let's see, nice narrow trees. I bet the bear couldn't climb up that one, huh? But cut three of those. And then at the same time, go ahead and trace the patterns for the trees. Well, they're just little free forms like this. Trace them on the back of the paper, press them to the wrong side of the fabric, and then just cut them out. And then you just start placing everything on the background. Start with the three trees and line those up. And then these pieces go on next. One, two, three. Oh, that looks good. And the bears, oh, they get scattered all through there. The mama and her little babies all wandering around looking for some food. We better keep those down off the mountain, huh? More like that. Well, you get everything in place. Then you just iron it down, fuse it and then zigzag stitch around each one of the outside edges to hold it in place. Let me get them fused. I'll stitch them down, then I'll add some borders and show you how to finish off with those bear's paws. I can barely keep track of all of these pieces. I just have to get them sewn together. Now take your centerpiece, 
Once all of your applique is done, lay that out and then take your 16 bears paws and just walk them right around that centerpiece and you can see that they go in a direction the whole way around. Now we only need to keep track of two different colors and two different size squares. Now the first color goes right next to the folded border. This is the inside triangle right here all around the outside edge here and then here you have a second color. You have this brown that goes around the outside edge. Now the inside triangles come from one square that is eight and three-fourths inches square and you cut that square into four pieces on both diagonals. Now let me just stack these up because they go right along here. They're going to fit right in with that paw. So let me just lay these pieces out. You're going to match that right up to that first border. Oh, this is going to be looking great. Very homespun. Now the second color right here also comes from an eight and three-fourths inch triangle cut into fourths and those are also placed around the outside edge. Well that just about makes that whole border up. But right down here we have one more square and that is a four and a half inch square. This time you only cut it once on one diagonal and then you'll see you just turn them so that they continue that pattern just to fit right in there. Now, once you have the whole quilt top laid out, it's time to sew the borders together. Work just with the sides first. There are three paws in this one. You sew the two sides together and then literally sew them right to the quilt top. And then you have the top and the bottom. And in the top you have five paws and then all of your triangles, the inside triangle, the outside triangle to sew together. Get them in long strips and then sew those to the quilt top. It's looking good. Now this will make just a great wall hanging for Thanksgiving. But let me show you what you can do with some bear's paws for Christmas. Well these are just the little miniature ones. Just the tiny ones that will fit into the miniature quilt. This is actually a fussy cut of a bear. Just a two and a fourth inch square right there. Just tiny claws around the outside edge. And you can literally sew that hanger in right at the same time. Now this one is just so cute. You've got the bear cut on point, and that is actually a fussy cut. Let me show you how you do that. You just pick out which bear you want to feature, and then cut your size of template, template plastic. This is two and a fourth. You literally trace it right on there, so then you can move it around and find other bears just like it. Cut around there and add those claws. Oh, it just works so great. Well, you know, the bears are great for holiday decorating. I have a great recipe to share for you, too. What if you want to have bear roast for dinner? Well, you just take your bear roast and you soak it for four hours in onions then drain it and then poke it full of holes right up to the bone. Stuff those holes with garlic. Then you put it in the oven at 325. You cook it long and slow just like pork. Ooh, that sounds good to me. <laughs> I've been going through my collection of antique quilt blocks. Many times quilt blocks are known by different names in different localities and the Bear's Paw block is one that is known by several different names. Journalist and political activist Ruth Finley studied the migration of patterns from one community to another and documented it in 1929 in old patchwork quilts and the women who made them. Now this is credited as being the second book devoted to the subject. You remember Marie Webster's book was credited as the first American book on quilting. Well this is a reprint published by EPM Publications and it's still great reading. Well Ruth said bear's paw blocks were popular since about 1800 in western Pennsylvania and Ohio and it's easy to explain why a quilt resembling the footprints of an animal would be popular in these states. The combinations of grays and blacks with shirting were very common. These were also called plain Jane quilts. Well this block is very bare looking and it also got too close to the fire. A friend of Ruth's introduced her to a famous old Long Island pattern called 
duck's foot in the mud. Well, of course, there were more ducks on Long Island than there were ever bears. The blue striping is printed on this, and the plaid is woven. Very interesting. Well, a Philadelphia woman invited Ruth to see the hand of friendship, our same pattern all over again. The Society of Friends had given it that name, typical of their speech and faith. Now, fabrics as this dotted piece were called wash goods or tub goods because they held up well with laundering. Well, Ruth Finley said, there never was a quilt piece that didn't bear a name. Enjoy making the Bear's Paw Block, calling it any name you choose.